Swamp Thing started out as a part of DC's House of Secrets series, and then evolved into its own comic series, which led to two films, a live action series, and an animated series. It revolved around a scientist named Alec Holland, who undergoes a metamorphosis into this weird plant-human hybrid creature after his lab is bombed by agents who want his formula, and the burning chemicals from the explosion engulf him and set him ablaze, where he dives into the muck of the swamp which triggers his transformation. From there he becomes a protector of the wetlands. The popularity of the series was at its peak in the 80s, and a video game adaptation was brought to light in 1992 on the NES released by THQ. It's a side-scrolling platformer. You move Swamp Thing around various stages, battling against legendary enemies like this blob of shit and this metal hunk of crap. More often than not, your only means of defending yourself is this weak-ass punch that's only effective if you're right in front of the enemy. Your range sucks, even for a punch. To make matters worse, the hit detection isn't very good. You have to be pretty damn accurate with your punch. And if that weren't enough, some enemies are unaffected by the punch. The only thing you can do is avoid them. And the only way you can tell what you are allowed to punch is trial and error. So that means you're going to take damage trying to figure that out. You do find the occasional green sludge balls you can throw at enemies. These really help, but unfortunately you only get 10 shots for every power up you find. And there aren't many per level, so you have to use them sparingly. Plus, you can't save them by punching. There's only one attack button, so you're stuck having to potentially waste them to get something off your back. You get a health bar with a maximum of 6 hits, and these little potion icons you can collect will restore one hit point. And there are flowers every once in a great while where you can restore your entire life meter by pressing up on the D-pad. The other power-up you can grab are these batteries. For every 50 you collect, you get an extra life, and you start out with 3. Once you get a game over, it's back to the title screen. No continues. And when you do beat a level, get this, your health status carries over. They don't even cut you a fucking break by restoring your health? That's bullshit. This game is difficult enough as it is, and in a cheap, frustrating way. For one thing, you walk slower than shit, and since the best means of defense are avoiding enemies, your lack of speed is a real problem. Now when you jump, you move noticeably faster. This change of speed between running and jumping, or should I say walking and jumping, makes the whole process awkward because you have to adjust. You might as well be jumping most of the time, which is a bad sign. I mean, you really shouldn't have to do that. The mechanics should have been fixed. There is a speed burst you can pull off by holding A as you walk, but there's too much of a delay for it to really be effective. I already mentioned the shitty punching, but in case that wasn't enough, you can't punch while crouching. Well, technically you can, but you have to stand up first, so you can't attack enemies that are low on the ground. And that's an issue, because there are plenty of enemies down low that don't come up. You have to jump over them unless you can get to lower ground and line up with them accordingly. Another thing that sucks is that you have virtually no recovery time. Once you get hit, you have no chance to recuperate. You gotta get the hell away from whatever's hitting you, or you're gonna lose more health. The icing on the cake is the shitty soundtrack. The songs are repetitive and boring. Some songs are heard on multiple levels, the boss music is the same as the level music, and the final level, final boss, and end sequence are all one song. Lame. So the game starts off with a little intro. Dr. Alec Holland is working on a formula to grow forests in the deserts with the intention of ridding the world of hunger. When the evil Dr. Anton Arkane shows up to steal the formula and use it to become immortal. So he steals the formula, blows up the lab, and Holland runs off covered in flames mixed with the formula, dives in the swamp, and becomes Swamp Thing. Arcane wants Swamp Thing captured so he can get more of the formula, as the amount he stole wasn't enough. So he sends Dr. Demo after you. Right when you start out in stage 1, head left and grab this potion for a health point. That's right, you start out with 4 hit points when your max is 6. Go figure. Wait for this Venus flytrap to spit out this gunk and jump over it. Walk into the water and jump over this empty can that floats around in the water. Yeah, an empty can will hurt you. Jump and punch out these giant insects, and jump over these robotic mice on wheels. Attacking them is no use since they're so low. Watch out for these green fish that jump out of the water. Stop short of them and then pass. Jump up here and grab the green sludge balls, then watch out for the falling empty cans that are coming from who knows where. Wait for them to fall and then jump one at a time. 
when you get here climb up here and get the batteries and then a potion up here but watch out for the giant knives that inexplicably fly out of the door they'll go in either direction depending on where you are so watch the timing and slip through when there's an opening there's more sludge balls up here wait for the cans to fall then jump don't bother attacking the green fish with the sludge balls or punches they're unaffected climb up here shoot down this mouse with the sludge ball to give yourself some room Watch the knives and grab another potion and jump across these pillars, watching the falling cans first and grabbing the batteries along the way. Ride these alligator heads and jump up to grab the power-ups, but what sucks is you'll slide to the left a little the whole time, so you have to walk to the right here and there to keep yourself from falling off. Climb up here, get another potion, and then climb up the next one and jump off the edge, steering yourself to a one-up that's floating around, and soon after that is the end of the stage, no boss. The first enemies you'll see in stage 2 are a recurring theme. These eyeballs that peer out of the skulls, look both ways, and then freeze for a second and lunge out in that direction, bouncing all about. Your best bet is to stand on top of the skull before they pop out, see which way they're heading, and jump accordingly to avoid them. This jump looks impossible to make, but actually the tusk-like things that hang off the edge are actually walkable platforms. So walk to the edge, wait for the skulls that fly out from the bottom to give you an opening, and then jump. Wait for the green skulls to stop bouncing and walk under them, and then this cauldron will let bubbles out. Those will hurt you, but standing directly on the cauldron doesn't. Jump on the edge, there's a spot where the bubbles won't harm you, and then jump backwards to get the sludge balls, then move on when the bubbles give you an opening. Grab the potion here, and punch the skulls that bounce off the spike. Beware the spikes that are exposed. This giant rattlesnake will jump slowly and fire off a deadly, uh, sound wave, I guess. Use the sludge balls and jump over the sound wave. After this jump, this skeleton will pop out of the ground after you've passed it and move pretty fast towards you. Be ready to jump over it, and watch for the buried skulls on the ground for more throughout the level. Then you have to walk across burning hot coal. You'll only get hurt if you make contact with the little flames that pop out, so watch where they appear and jump across quickly. At this pit, let yourself fall and on the right side so you can grab this one up and some sludge balls. And then after battling a couple rattlers, climb up these platforms to get back to the surface, grabbing some batteries and a potion along the way. But before you head up, slip down this way, avoid the eyeballs and flying skulls and grab the one up. If you took the overland route, the only thing you really missed was a potion, which you could go back and get if you need it. It's not that long of a trip. After that, it's a little bit more of the same shit you've been dealing with throughout the level and you'll reach the end. Again, no boss. The third stage takes place in a graveyard. These green reapers will pop out of the graves and float towards you. They're invincible to your attacks, but you can simply duck under them. Then punch out these purple paper mache birds that fly in this zigzag pattern, and carefully jump between these statue heads that float up and down once they leave an opening, and grab these sludge balls up here after a quick double jump. Then watch out for the statue heads that fire off horizontally, duck under them. After hopping between a couple more heads, you'll enter this indoor portion of the stage, and a modified version of the Green Reaper shows up. This time he floats vertically, before shifting over a bit. Walk under him when he's at his highest point. Walk between these falling flames, but remember that they can harm you when they're burning on the floor still. Getting past this falling flame with the Reaper in the way can be a bitch, but not if you simply wait for the Reaper to pass by and then go past the flame. This floating hand is just a platform. It can't hurt you. Jump on it and up this way to get back outside, and this is a pain in the ass. By standing on the center of this gravestone, you can freeze the second statue while the other continues to bounce. There's a potion up here if you jump quickly, but it's a bit harder to time the jump between the statues perfectly. After a short stretch of more of the same, you're back indoors again. Soon into it, you're forced to jump across various platforms over a pit toward the bottom. Leap across the edge of the second one here to get the one up and then quickly shift left so you miss the flames and land on a platform. Then head across a few more platforms and scale your way up the floating skeleton hands and you're outside again. Watch the green reapers that pop out of the gravestones here. Walk backwards staying between them and duck down once you're on the ground. Soon after is the boss, Dr. Demo. After a few small sparks splash away in the background, he'll appear somewhere and then split off into four snakes that travel in different directions. Try to get to where he is and punch him before he can attack. If you feel like you're not going to make it on time, retreat and keep as much distance as possible so you can anticipate where the snakes are going. Unfortunately, you'll lose all the sludge balls you had going into this fight, or any other boss battle for that matter. Repeat this process, he never changes patterns. After five hits, he's done. So since Demo failed, Arcane sends Weed Killer after you, who will of course be the next boss. 
Stage 4 starts off with a floating metal ball thing. Punch it out, then wait for the steam that shoots out of the cracks in the pipes to subside before moving on. Watch the green droplets that come out from the ceiling and wait for the remnants to splash as they can hurt you too. You can jump on these hooks, but only momentarily. They'll slide off the chain if you stand on them for too long, so jump off them quickly. You can also walk on these metal wheels that blend right in with the background and look like mere decoration. Watch out for this flying robotic thing that sneaks up behind you. Turn around and punch it quickly. This pipe that extends out is also a platform. Jump on it, then jump from wheel to wheel between the green droplets. These platforms that shift up and down are kind of weird. They'll freeze up once you're on them, so you have to jump in order to get them to move again. So make short jumps if you need to position them accordingly to line up with where you want. After going up the second one, head right and grab this one up in between the droplets. Then head back over and go left. Stay between these floor buffers that shift back and forth and watch out for the pipe on the edges of both sides. Don't stand on them for too long because they fall apart and send you back down again. You have to go through all the same shit you did in the beginning. These pipes that fall have a bit of discoloration to them, so watch out for those. While jumping across all these wheels, duck down when shit is flying overhead. Carefully position the platforms to avoid the steam and continue on, and soon you'll pass through a door at the next segment. These metal balls will float towards you, then up, and then explode. Stand directly underneath them so you don't get hit with debris, or just punch them out. The rest of the stretch is shit you've already seen. You'll eventually hit another door and move on to the next segment. First grab the sludge balls over here, then head left. Head up the first platform, avoid the steam, and if you're low on health, head right, go up the next platform, head right and go up another platform, and you'll hit a flower and you can restore your health. Now go back to where you were before, the second floor from where you came in from and head left. Jump across, punch out the shit in your way, and ride this platform up. Grab the green sludge balls, avoid the falling shit, and you're gonna continue moving right here. But first, ride this platform up, head left, grab the power-ups, and return back down and continue right like I mentioned before. Jump across all these wheels and hooks carefully, and avoid the green droplets till you get to the next door and encounter the boss, Weed Killer. He fires a gun that's probably filled with... Weed Killer. He'll shift back and forth and slowly fire in five trajectories. Straight down, straight to either side, or diagonal and down to either side. Jump up the wheels to the opposite side he's facing and line yourself up to punch him. It takes five shots to do him in. Make sure he's aiming away from you. If he turns his attention in your direction, retreat and keep your distance so you can avoid the shots and repeat the process. If you think the strategy sounds a lot like the last boss, well, it is. After taking out Weed Killer, Arcane is even more pissed and calls upon his last minion, Skin Man. The next three stages are extremely short. Compared to the last one, they're much easier too. Really, they all could have been lumped into one level. For stage 5, just punch out the flying bugs, jump over the bear traps, and watch these little robots that shift back and forth. You get to these big trees, press up, and you'll merge your way inside it or something. Hold up to get to the top and press A to shake the tree and get the one up that falls out. Pressing select of all buttons gets you out. Then later on, there's another one. This time, when you get all the way to the top, escape and use the flower. Then you'll encounter this gun turret that shoots from both the top half and bottom half in slow intervals. Be aggressive, jump over or duck under one of its shots, and then just head in and punch the shit out of it until it's destroyed, and the stage is done. In stage 6, you'll encounter these pistons that smash down quickly but will slow down here and there. That's when you want to move, but even though they're slowed down, they're still pretty fast, so duck down once you're underneath them, and then once they pull back up in their slow state, inch forward some more until you get out. After that is a long stretch of bouncing blue robots and little red ones that shift across the ground and quick ass little spiders that skip all about. A lot of time you have to deal with a few of these fucks at the same time, so watch where you walk, and be aware of what's around you. Thankfully there are no pits in this stage, so you don't have to worry about that too. Later on, red blocks of junk will fall from the scaffolding above. Get close to them and stop short so they'll fall in front of you, but watch out cause they stick out halfway out of the ground and can hurt you if you make contact with it. This little red robot moves fast and won't leave the area, and you can't kill it, so you have to do a quick double jump over it and then watch out because it chases after you once you pass it. Jump back over it. Soon after is another gun turret right before the end of the stage. This one flies through the air and eventually comes down. Keep your distance, avoid the gunshots, and then move in for the kill. If you have sludge balls, it's even easier. The seventh stage has puddles of toxic waste you don't want to make contact with or you'll get hurt. These are the ones that glow. 
This green spider will jump back and forth between two of these puddles and you can't kill it. So jump when it's away and walk underneath it. Then there's a gun turret that moves. You can't do a goddamn thing about it because it's too low to the ground. So jump over it and get ahead of it as quickly as you can. Then these two green spiders will pop out of the waste puddle at different heights and speeds each. So you have to time this jump really well. Grab the sludge balls and stay on this drum and let the bug fly towards you so you can line up a good shot with your sludge. Grab this potion under the bouncing green spider and recharge your energy from this flower. And soon after is another gun turret. Take it out the same way as before and right after that is the battle with skin man. Power yourself up with the flower once you have one hit point left to extend the battle if you need to. He'll fly overhead dropping balls that turn into these little bugs that always spit out toward the left. So try to stay on the right side of them. To defeat him, you have to go into one of these trees and press A to drop the sludge balls onto him when he passes by your tree. He'll be dropping the balls that spring out directly in front of the trees. Use left and right on the d-pad to switch trees. He'll be dropping the balls that spring out directly in front of the trees. If you're in the tree when this happens, it'll hurt you, so try to keep ahead of him and get away before he can get to you. After 5 hits, he's all done. Now Arcane realizes he has to do this job on his own. It's on to the 8th and final stage. Jump over these puddles when the electrical current stops. And once you get to these platforms that blend right in with the background, you'll realize you're in another one of these jump for your life levels. Great. Watch out for the hand that reaches between the bars, the falling shit from the ceiling, and when you get to these platforms, wait for the fire to temporarily burn out before you jump on top of it. And then jump off them quickly before it comes back. Try to keep a safe distance from this floating robot that shoots lasers in both diagonal directions downward. It can be a pain in the ass, especially if other enemies make it onto the screen when it does. Careful when standing on the lights, they'll break off and send you to the ground. So quickly jump off this light to get the sludge balls, and then off the next one to get the one up. Jump over this green asshole that shows up, jump over the deadly puddles, and get ready for more climbing. There are several extra paths you can take to get some power-ups, but I'd rather just try to spearhead my way to the end of the level. You're risking death to get these items anyway. So for the most part, you'll want to just keep it generally at exit stage right. Getting these laser pricks off your back is much easier now that you have sludge balls. Watch the electrical currents in front of you. The first one won't start, so get on it and wait for the next one to give you an opening. Quickly do the same for the next one, grab the potion, and get onto this flame platform and continue climbing. There'll be another small series of electrical currents. Do the same as before and jump across these lights till you get to the red scaffolding. You can jump up if you want to climb and jump across to get a one up that's floating here, but you've got to contend with this falling crap from the ceiling. So if your health is low, just bail on the idea and jump down to the floor, as the door to the final boss is just ahead. This metal ball will float around and fire an electrical current downward. Try to stay on the bottom portions of the platform to avoid the flames, and watch for when the ball stops and floats up a bit. That's its cue to summon the current. Every couple times it attacks, Arcane will appear near the ball and just stand there like a jackass. And for some reason he's blue now, what the fuck happened? Punch him when he shows up, but be careful not to fall down the pit. You could always be conservative and just wait for him to show up right in front of you. I'd stay on the middle platform because that gives you the most opportunities to attack him on either side. After five punches, he's all done, and you get a brief ending cutscene explaining that the swamp is safe and Swamp Thing will remain there to protect it. The idea of a Swamp Thing game on NES makes sense. It really could have been a good game, but obviously the ball was dropped here. Or should I say the sludge ball was dropped. Yeah, that joke was terrible, but so is the game, so fuck it. That wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.